Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is Volume and Surface Area of Prisms, a part of my IGCSE exam series. If you do find it useful, please do like and subscribe. Now let's get into the maths. Okay, we have a cylinder, and it has a diameter of 14 and a height of 20, and it's asked us to work out the volume. Well, a cylinder looks like this. And as all prisms, we need to work out the cross-sectional area first, which will be the area of the circle, which will be pi times r squared, which is pi times by well, the diameter is seven, uh, 14, so the radius must be 7, which will give me 49 pi. I'll leave it like that for now. And therefore, the volume of the prism is always the cross-sectional area, which is 49 pi, multiplied by how far that area is pushed through the shape. In this case, it is the height that is uh, that the cross-sectional area is being pushed through, and that is 20. So I'll do that multiplied by 20, and that could go into my calculator to get an answer to three significant figures. So 49 multiplied by pi multiplied by 20, and that gives me uh, 3,000 and 79, which is approximately to three significant figures, 3080. Uh, I put this question in because it's a really tricky one. It's a question one, which I think is really harsh, um, because in order to get this question right, you, um, you need to know how much 1.5 liters is. Well, one litre is equal to 1,000 centimetres cubed. So 1.5 litres is 1,500 centimetres cubed. And you might just skim read this question and literally just work out the volume of this shape. But that's not what it's asking you to do. It's asking you to work out the depth of the water. So how high up the water will go if this is filled with... 1,500 centimetres cubed. Well, the base area, or the cross-sectional area, is going to be pi multiplied by the radius squared, which we could do on our calculator. Pi times 8.2 squared. And then that will be multiplied by however high up the water rises to. And we want it to rise so that the volume is exactly 1500. So it'll be 1500 is equal to the cross-sectional area multiplied by the depth. So therefore the depth is equal to 1500 divided by the cross-sectional area. So I do 1500 divided by the answer and I get 7.1 centimetres to one decimal place. Tricky question for a question one, that. Okay, next question. Um, and we have lots of text here. Uh, but essentially, all of this text is just um, explained on the diagram there. And it says volume A is uh, greater than volume B, but how much greater? Well, let's work out the volume of each. So the volume of A will be the cross section, which will be this triangle which will be one half times base times height and then multiplied by how far that cross section is pushed back through the shape which is five. So we can do a half times six times six times five and we'll get 90. And then the volume of the um, half cylinder, I guess you'll call it, I'll just say cylinder, is well, first off, it is a half. And then we need to multiply that by... Uh, or then we need to find the, the volume of the, uh, the full cylinder, which will be the cross-sectional area is going to be pi r squared, where r is half the diameter, so 3. And then that is multiplied by how far through it is pushed the shape, which is, again, 5. 
So we can do uh, a half because it's half of a cylinder multiplied by the area of the cross section which is pi r squared and then multiplied by how far it's pushed back which is 5 and this gives me 70.7 okay so the difference is just going to be 90 minus 70.7 so I can do 90 minus my previous answer and I get 19.3 Okay, we've got Jeb putting water into the pool and he wants it to go 60 centimeters below the top of the, the pool. So it's going to go up to like here where the height will now be 1.9 meters because that will be 60 centimeters taken off from the top of 2.5 meters. And it says water flows into the pool at 40, sorry, 400 liters per minute. And how long will it take to fill the pool all the way up to the top? Okay, so let's work out how many meters cubed we need. So the volume will be 3 times 12 times 1.9. So that will be 3 times 12 times 1.9, um, which is... 68.4 meters cubed so how many liters is that well I need to multiply that by um, a thousand that's get how many liters we need so times that by a thousand and that will give me 68,400 and then finally, let's work out how many minutes. So I need to divide this through by 400 because that's how many you do every minute. So dividing that through by 400 tells you how many minutes it will take. And that's 71 minutes. And in terms of hours and minutes, well, I know that two hours is 120. So it's two hours and take off 120 will leave me with 51 minutes so 2 hours 51 minutes perfect okay next question and we have um, a trapezium and the, we know the volume is equal to 608 so let's work out the area of the, trape of the trapezium which is the cross section so it's a half of A plus B multiplied by H, where A and B are the two parallel sides. So it's a half 7 plus 12 multiplied by H, which we don't know yet. And the volume of the shape will be that cross-sectional area, which is the trapezium, times by how far back it goes, which is 10. So the volume is a half multiplied by uh, 7 plus 12 times by h times by 10 and that is equal to 608 right we could do some simplifying here on the left hand side we have a half times by 7 plus 12 which is then times by 10 and then times by h so that's 95 is times by h so we have 95 h is equal to 608 so dividing through by 95 gives me uh, 6.4. Okay, next question. We've got a, um, a cylinder and um, we're not told the height. Uh, we know the volume though and it's asked us to cal calculate the total surface area. Okay, so let's work out the height by um, using the volume. So I know the volume will equal the um, cross-sectional area, which is a circle, multiplied by how far that circle is pushed through, which is the height. So 72 pi is the volume. That's going to equal pi multiplied by 3 squared multiplied by h. And I can divide both sides through by um, 9 pi, because 3 squared is 9. 
So dividing both sides by 9 and pi will leave me 72 divided by 9 is 8. Yep. And that's just going to leave me h. So great, so we know the height is h. And now it's asked us to work out the total surface area. Well, we're told what the curved surface area is on our formula sheet of a cylinder. It's 2 pi r h. So the total surface area will equal the curved surface area, which is the bit which is sort of wrapped around the shape, and also the two um, uh, bases and lid, so the base and the lid. And they're both circles, so it's two lots of pi r squared. So I'll need to do uh, 2 times pi times 3 is the radius times by the height is 8, plus 2 times pi times by the radius squared. So I'll put that into my calculator. 2 pi times 3 times 8, plus 2 times pi times 3 squared. And I get 66 pi, which to three significant figures is 207 centimeters, or no, meters uh, cubed. That's area and perimeter done. If you found that useful, please do like and subscribe, and then move on to the next topic. Bye for now.